Hey, you're listening to the Brutally Delicious Podcast. I'm Bruce. And I'm Chris. And today we're going to take a little twist, not necessarily a musician, but we've got Richard McDeed. Um, he is out there with his son, who has cerebral palsy, and he's bringing awareness to it Why? taking him to metal shows. And I know he's going to have a lot to say. And I know you have sort of a connection, you said, with this too as well, right? Yeah, my aunt uh, has cerebral palsy. So I, I grew up with it in my family, you know, quite a bit. So it's 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 a hard disease, you know, for people to have. Right. That's for sure. It's a struggle. So hopefully uh, he's got some new stuff to say. I know the metal family has been embracing him along the way. I've been following him on Facebook. Love and, it. Uh, <laughs> How was uh, the week of golf? Uh, well, it was not very metal, but, uh, you know, I did hit some good fairway medals. Lost I don't know. Uh, drank a lot never of beer. Got... Oh, yeah. Sorry. <laughs> drank a lot of beer, lost a lot of balls, got a lot of exercise. Did you play well or? Oh, hell no. Really? I used to be a really avid golfer, like. To be honest with you, it actually broke up my long-term relationship a long time ago before I met my current wife. Really? <laughs> yeah, I was so addicted. And she was just like, you can't go golfing anymore. I'm like, why not? <laughs> She's just like, you're never home. I was like, I know, I'm golfing. That's funny. <laughs> and then, uh, anyways, yeah, it broke up my last relationship. So, you know, there's that. <laughs> but I haven't, I've since I moved down here, I haven't had time to play a lot. But uh, you got some really nice courses by you, don't you? I couldn't believe it. Like we within like five minutes or ten minutes either direction, I have three courses. Yeah, right around here. It's amazing, and they're probably nice ones too, right? Because you're near DC. Some of them were nice. Some of them were in rough shape. I mean, they're all nice courses, but they're public tracks, so um, they're uh, they're hit and miss, you know. We played one right. up. We played one right on the Potomac, uh, and it was really nice, but really hard. Yeah, interesting. I never got the golf bug. I've tried a couple times, and yeah, it's it's not for everyone, you know. Like I know a lot of people that tried it and just was like, "What the hell? What is this? This is lame. What do I want to spend four hours doing this?" But for me, it it I found it. I find golf a great metaphor for life because when you're golfing you get to see how you react in re in the real world. You know, where you can analyze yourself in a better way when you're playing golf than when you're just living life. And you get to handle your balls. And you get to handle your balls and get them in the hole. <laughs> right. Shove it in the hole. Go home. You don't expect any less from me, do you? No, no, not at all. <laughs> <laughs> the low road is the only road I take. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, like, there's a lot of innuendo in golf, that's for sure. Well, that's good. You had some fun. Fun downtime, family. Yeah, yeah. My brother-in-law was down. Thankfully, he likes beer as much as I do. And, uh, you know, we had to shop around for some beers for him, but we finally got him some beer that he liked. And, uh, yeah. Did you do the twisty thing? The twisty thing? Yeah, did you cool him off by twirling him? Oh, yeah, we did that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Of course, you have to do that at least once because everyone's asking about it ever since I put it on Facebook. So, yeah. you know. We did it. And he was like, wow, this is a really cold beer. <laughs> I was like, I, I never, I never heard about it till Russ and, and you talked about it. So, oh yeah. I learned about that from Andy, man. He taught me that trick. Nice. One late night we were drinking and all he had was warm beer and he's like, watch this. And I was just like, what the fuck? This is amazing. <laughs> <laughs> nice. <laughs> You've been listening to anything good? Oh man, yes, 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 yes. Um, but their name is slipping my mind because I'm an idiot right now. I sent that link to you. Oh yeah, hold it, on. It, I'm finding it. I'm finding it. Uh, yeah, I, North Lane. I, I, yes, the new North Lane. Wow, what a band! I, How have I never heard these guys before? I was just shocked. I agree. We'll see if we can reach out and get them on and chat with us. They were very good. I even shared that link, nice and heavy. Oh yeah, and the production's really good. Uh, what yep. a, a band that I mixed for Vancouver called Of Artistry. They're like a kind of like a new new metal band. 
lots of mm-hmm. synths and lots of drum machines, but still really heavy. Um, I mixed a record for them, and, and Tommy, uh, whose real name is Connor, sent me the link. He's like, check this out. And I was like, holy shit. Yeah, that was rocking. <laughs> yeah, unbelievable. And, so, ha- of course, My Own Will, that, that new single that they put out was really good, too. Oh, yeah, I sent you that video. Pretty slamming. Yeah, really, really slamming. I and they lo- seem to be they seem to be doing quite well out there on the road. Oh, they do. Yeah, I'm so happy for them. I love. Not only do I love good hard rock metal, like aggressive metal, but when the songs are written well and they're recorded well and they're produced well and they're performed, like the performance on the recording is that good. It's just it brings it up to a level, you know, that it doesn't matter if you're a major label, indie label or even just independent completely. It just sounds so pro. I just love it. And it doesn't hurt that they're nice guys, so that's even better. Oh, yeah, yeah. I mean, wasn't that the guy that you asked about the manhole? Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, he he was a good sport, and he played along, and he was a nice guy, so I'm glad to see them doing well. (laughs) Yeah, me too. (laughs) So I've got a couple things on my list before we talk about what we're going on today. Okay. I went to that. I went to that Moonrise EDM festival this weekend. Oh, yeah. Dude, dude, that's a trip. So different from anything I've ever seen. Was everyone just super high or what? Uh, well, yeah, there was definitely a cloud of uh, of weed smoke going on. But I ran into a guy. Well, I didn't run into him, but I was sitting there, and he kind of opened up this little aluminum foil package of pills. I don't know. I'm not sure what the- <laughs> And he dropped him, and he started yelling. It was like this big dirt field, and he started yelling, I'll give a free hit to anyone who will help me find them all. Oh, jeez. <laughs> oh, yeah, it was very interesting. And I didn't know going in that there's like a, a dress code, or really an undress code. So it seems that um, you have to wear – G strings or T backs or whatever they call them. <laughs> yeah. Even if it's, it doesn't matter like how pimply your ass is or how white your ass is <laughs> or how big your ass is. <laughs> or actually, I saw guys doing it. So how hairy your ass is. <laughs> <laughs> it's a thing. So, so like I saw the, a group of guys. It's a good example. I saw a group of guys wearing nothing but a pouch and a cowboy hat. No shoes, just like walking around these dirty fields, and I was going, "What the fuck is going on here?" <laughs> That's some, there's, you know, maybe you just want to wear a hat and a pouch, but man, what about <laughs> you? Don't want to step on the guy's pills with your bare feet. <laughs> <laughs> you're, you're, that dude was like, "Hey, I'll give somebody a hit if you can help me find all my pills." He dropped them in like the sand or the dirt that was there. Yeah, and everyone's dirty feet. Right. <laughs> <Walking> over. <laughs> Overall, though, it was very well done. It was like fifty thousand people, four stages. Wow, different ones. So one had like a rap stage. One was a strictly EDM. I think one was like a combination. Colin called it like dubstep or trap or something. Yeah, yeah. And then one actually had, ironically enough, a music festival with musicians. Oh, was only one. St- yeah, there was a a music stage with musicians. Amazing. Like, I saw a saxophone and stuff. That was kind of cool. Yeah, yeah, DJ with saxophone. I love that. When I've but, seen I mean, it so times. it was cool. I mean, it was it was hot. It was you know definitely a festival atmosphere. Oh yeah. But, it, but after like you know the fourth fifth act, we saw ten X that day. After like the fourth or fifth act of that, just nonstop bass cranked up as high as it goes. And I'm not even sure what frequency they're using, but it it like rattles your bones. It's deeper than in like an eight oh eight. Oh yeah. And they- it was just they're using subharmonics, so it's like they're probably running like subs that'll go down to like twenty two hertz, where you just hit the brown note all day, and yeah, it just hurts. Yeah, I mean you could feel it. Like I walked up to catch Colin to get him some water one or two times, and I was like, "Holy shit, it's gonna stop my heart!" Oh, I bet. Yeah, it's um, those festivals can have a lot of bass, but in the end, you know, I guess it was a good time overall, and. I love the people watching. I spent a lot of time in the VIP area just like going, wow, I don't know if you should have worn that pouch. You're a little bit, you know, <laughs> on, on the larger side. <laughs> Not to offend any of my larger listeners, but I mean, you got to know when you walk out of the house, you got a bunch of zits on your cheeks. 
Yeah. So, yeah. You know, there's no reason to wear it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Or if you're going to wear the pouch, make sure you shave the pubes, you know? Right. <laughs> you don't, you don't want, you don't want the insulation creeping out of the side. Yeah. You are a hundred percent. That's a good visual for all you people. <laughs> Jesus. So that was interesting. I don't know how many more of those I'll, I'll take him to go to, but at least he enjoyed it. And it you had a good time. Was it. that his first one that he's been to? Yeah, because they're always 18 and over. Oh. And so I was able to swindle something and get him through in like this weird VIP thing. And then he was able to hang out. But every one of them strictly is 18 and over. Maybe because, and I I say it's 18 and over, but some of those people I saw there, or even the majority of the people I saw there were probably like 15. Oh, yeah. And I'm sure they like wore full clothes leaving the house with mom and dad and then stripped in the parking lot. Because <laughs> <laughs> there's, there's no way I'm letting my daughter out like that. Oh God, no! Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I, I, I won't even let myself out of the house like that. No, no, no. <laughs> Imagine it twenty years when they look back at those pictures and they'd be like, "What the fuck was I thinking?" Yeah. Why didn't anyone tell me I had a big white head on my ass? <laughs> <laughs> That's nice. Chris, that, you're all about the visuals today. Yeah. That's good. Is that one of those guys' pills, or do I got a white head on my ass? <laughs> <laughs> nice. <laughs> So that was uh that was one of those. Um we talked about golf, that was on my list. You got anything that's on pertinent? No, I've I well, it's personal, but I put new pickups in my guitar. Nice. I put in the John Petrucci, uh John Petrucci from Dream Theater. He may, he has a custom pickup called uh, mm-hmm. Crunch Lab and the, uh, the Liquifier, and they are fucking amazing. Really? Blew my mind. Changed my nice. strat like a million times over. It's just unbelievable. That's beautiful. So you've been playing a lot then. Oh God, yeah, yeah. I haven't stopped. I've been on a writing spree lately, and I'm doing something that I've never really done, songwriting wise, which is it's getting political. Which I don't really know how I feel about it, but I live kind of in the political, yes, center of the land. universe. So I guess it kind of fits. But right. So you kind of, of live in the. Whitehead zit on the ass of America. <laughs> it's true story. It's true story. Yeah. I'm, I'm going to bring that back in as much as I can. We'll get did, the visual. Did, did anyone <laughs> say, did anyone <laughs> tell me that there's a white head on the fucking coast of DC? Jesus. <laughs> yeah. 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 Did you have a chance to listen to that song I sent you? I did. Yeah, absolutely. So you want to, I'll let you start. That? So this one is Silver, or this week's selection is uh, X by Silver Tongue. It's a band out of Dallas.
first I was like totally sucked in with those dirty, grungy kind of riffs. Yeah. But but then it goes all over the place. I mean, it's got some punk going on, some guttural vocals. Yeah, it's it's got a lot of stuff going on. Um, at first, I was sucked in too because it kind of reminded me of like old Sabbath, you know? Yeah, it got that fuzzy deep riff. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, but can I be honest? Oh yeah, what the hell? Okay. I just thought the drummer was really weak. There was a lot of missed hits and a lot of timing changes that weren't necessarily intentional. Right. You know? So, I mean, the song was good. I just thought the drums were pretty weak. Right. Overall, though... Overall, I liked it. I mean, I yeah, enjoyed I mean, it. It's got, it's got a groove to it. it it's kind of cool. And it, like you said, it's got a lot of stuff to it. Oh, yeah. Like, right away, I was like, oh, this reminds me of Old Sabbath. This is cool. Yep. It, also, it, it also reminded me... There's a part near the end. I don't know what the guy's saying. He's like, <laughs> Doing the, like kind of <laughs> and it kind of reminded me of a Canadian band called The Smalls. And if, were they punky? N- they were kind of a mix between thrash and punk. I'll send you some of their stuff. They're pretty okay. Like they're probably besides the Bare Naked Ladies, they're the biggest independent band that Canada has ever seen. I mean, they've all retired on what right. on what they did. Just selling oh, wow. CDs and touring Canada. Wow. They turned down every major label deal they were ever offered. I've never heard of them on this side of the... Uh, they never toured the, the States. Never came. Ever? No, they were offered record deals down here, too. And Interesting. They, they just said, no, we're making a lot of money. <laughs> Is that gonna... just so they could have do it their way and do what they wanted? Yeah, yeah. And now that they're broken up, uh, the bass player has turned into one of Canada's biggest country songwriters. Interesting. Yeah, which is really cool. Core Blonde, yeah. But it very, very they, they kind of reminded me of that kind of style where it's it's raw, you know? So I shouldn't say that the drums threw me off. I was just expecting, because it's so strong off the start, I just kind of expected it to stay that way. Right. Even if it was raw. But that's, the, that's what reminded me of the Smalls is that rawness where it's just like, we're just going to play go, <laughs> you know? which, which is why I brought in that punk thing. Cause that was kind of like that whole DIY punk thing where they're just, you know, four sticks and they're full ball or in. Yeah. 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 That yeah. Makes sense? yeah. Absolutely. It does. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, so, overall yeah. it was really good. Uh, you know, I Anybody, if you're listening to this, that's our song of the week. Go check out X by silver tongue devils. There you go. And don't All hate right. me. No, and don't hate me. We, we got to be honest, right? Always. If if there's one thing that people hate about me as an audio engineer, I'll give you one hint. That you're honest. Oh, I always tell people what I think. That Scott- take sucked. <laughs> <laughs> Excuse me. Can you sing that again? <laughs> yeah, nice. Oh, that was really close. Let's do it 50 more times. <laughs> nice. <laughs> but drunk- in the end. Or, or this is my favorite one. Oh, we'll just do three takes of the drums and, you know. That'll be good. And we'll that, comp them. Yeah, not even comp them. I, I've, well, I shouldn't say this out loud, but. Okay. Cut them to the grid. <laughs> <laughs> but in the end, your honesty, if they're following it, is going to produce a better record. At- oh, absolutely. Right. You know, I used to pussyfoot around stuff. And the only thing that happened during that is the anger of the band would be pushed from the recording session to the end of the recording. Why didn't and we which do, is worse. Why didn't we do this? Why didn't we do that? Why didn't we do this? So when you're honest up front, if the, some bands can take it, a lot of creative people get so, like they get really sensitive about you telling them, you know, that sucked. Right. Or or you know, I know this is your favorite part, but it's terrible. <laughs> so <laughs> right. <you know? laughs> it's the part you work the most on. Yeah, and it's getting cut cuz it sucks. <laughs> I would never but say it that way, but you know, but in the end, the record comes up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, you've done that as an audio engineer, I'm sure. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. So kick back, relax, and let's uh, get Richard on phone. Right on. Richard, how are you? Yeah, how are you, Richard? We are doing great. Meet my partner, Chris. How you doing? Chris, how are you doing, sir? Fantastic, Richard. Nice to meet Mate. you. Richard, thank you for taking the time. Why don't you tell us a little bit about yourselves before we go ahead and dig in? There's not too much about me. It's all about my son, man. It's it's all about my son. He's he's the the world champion chosen by the world. Uh, I've been a single dad 19 years now, and uh, I've raised two beautiful children, and 
One is a little bit more crazy than the other, but I love them both. Uh, about two and a half years ago, uh, Star and Tribune in Minneapolis did an article about us, and it was called 500 Bands in 365 Days. Holy shit. And that, that was a great article. It was a great year, actually. A day later, a man from the Minnesota metal scene reached out to us. We like to call Mason's big brother. And he invited us to the Minnesota Metal Awards. We, uh, we came. We, came. Uh, we found 89 bands that brought CDs and shirts for my son. Wow. And it was a beautiful thing. You're giving me chills. I fell in love with our scene. Yeah, I fell in love with our scene here in Minnesota. I'm actually in Florida now, but in Minnesota. We got to know the bands. My son got real sick. Ended up in the hospital for almost six months. Oh, man. Yep. And um, when I left the hospital, they actually took me into a room and said, uh, we need to send your son to a hospice. And I looked at the doctors and said, um, he's coming home with me. I'm at the best hospital with the best doctors and nurses on the planet. Uh, it took me weeks to train you guys in on his brain injury. Yeah. Okay. Um, during that time, so many of the bands reached out to my son and gave us positive support, right? It's a metal family way. Uh, we agreed that maybe we should have a birthday party for Mason in December. This was in August. Um, it looked like Mason wasn't going to be ready for that. So we looked ahead because we wanted to have this party. Um, March was National Cerebral Palsy Awareness Month, and there was some time available. So that was the one we made it. Our first year, we had 10 bands play and about 200 people show up, and Mason loved it. He loved it. The bands bands were all awesome. They treat him like a brother. My first poster came out on January 26th, and February, early February, I reached out to a company called My Good Planet, and they did an article about my son. And when that article was released, it crashed Reddit.com server, and two hours later, Two hours later, I was doing an interview with National Agency, who is the news service for Ireland and the UK. Wow. Yeah, it spread. By the next morning, I found my little Mason Metal Fest in the Irish and the UK newspapers um, saying we were the first special needs heavy metal festival on the planet. Wow. By the end of February, it had spread to all seven continents. Okay. Day after February 8th, a man reached out to me from 60 Second Docuseries. And they asked, we talked about stereotypes you know, about our family, special needs families. And I agreed to do that because I looked and a whole bunch of people in our scene love their stories. And I thought, you know what? Let's do this. Uh, that video right now is coming up on 4 million views on Facebook alone. I got to be honest. <laughs> that's where I found you. Yeah. 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 Cool video, huh? Yeah. You I said, saw that and I was like, oh, we need to get him right away. I sent Chris a message and. Awesome, awesome. So that's kind of where we find ourselves. I'm on a road trip right now with him. Uh, 25 days uh, road tripping. We went from Rockfest to Rock USA to Montreal 77. Oh. Uh, yes, we Mason went over the railings three times for Slayer. It was, <laughs> it was beautiful, beautiful. You know, I I've always, sometimes wish I had a cameraman following us because the that crowd parted like the Red Sea, right? Yeah. I walked Mason through a Slayer mosh pit from hell, right? They yeah. all stopped. They all stopped. We got to the front, and up and over the railing he went. Oh. So it was a beautiful, beautiful thing. That's, that's awesome. One thing, that's one thing we always talk about here and for the last, since we've been doing this is, and pretty much kind of why we did the whole podcast is because it really is a great big metal family, no matter where you're from. It's all about like a love of the riff and you've got an instant brotherhood and stuff like that gives me the chills as well. It doesn't matter if you're from Charlotte, North Carolina or Argentina or Egypt, right? These people will reach out to me every day. And it's pretty amazing how uh, our metal family is worldwide. Um, we are going to connect them next March. We're going to do shows in all states and over 100 countries in brotherly love, honor, and respect. I want to get our union. Well, I want to get our news uh, saying something positive for once. I want them to recognize my son's huge accomplishment, right? Because this is a big deal to a lot of people, right? Sure. sure. Um, I want to say March 20th, CARE 11, our, our news team uh, came out to my home, and we did an interview for my son's bedroom. I was G2 feeding him, and 
Um, I brought them into real life special needs, right? And during that conversation, she told me that she had seen Mason's article on reddit.com that day. Uh, and I realized right then and there that every journalist in this country seen Mason's article, not one chose to write about us. Now, if I go and look and I search Mason's name, which I do every day, I'm always looking for new articles being written. There's about 80 of them from around the world that have written about my son and his huge accomplishment, right? Yeah. But not one in this country. And really? I think it's one, we need to get their attention, right? The only way we're going to get their attention is doing something so positive that they can't say no to him. I'm serious. I'm going to do it. Connect our entire metal family worldwide from Russia to Argentina to Egypt to New Zealand to Australia. They all reaching out to help us, right? We are going to meet um, the owner of a company called Metal Roos. Metal Roos is an old school metal company that has been around since I was a child, right? And that guy reached out to me back in February and says, I'd like to hire you as a producer. I was like, really? This is really quite an honor. He just did 39 countries at once on June 15th. Wow. I, know with, I know with his help, we can do over 100 countries. And that will be that will be a statement. That will be unity. Are you looking to do this all like on the same day? Yeah. Yes. Yes, and no. Um, I have a feeling we're going to be doing more than a one day show here in Minnesota. It's probably going to be a three or four day show, but August or on March twentieth uh, is the day we're choosing. It's not Awareness Day. I want to. I want to. I want to be able to do shows from our our August or I'm sorry. March 20th through Awareness Day, which is March 25th. Gotcha. So I'm hoping I can get enough support from bands um, and locally and in the States and around the world that want to do this. And they're reaching out. They want to help. I'm getting not just, you know, our local bands that want to do shows, but I'm getting bigger bands like Campbell Corpse. Oh, cool. They reached out. Yeah, they reached out to me months ago and said they want to help. I, there's a video from Gene Hoagland from testament and death oh good yeah, thanks that kid. earlier yeah he wa he wants to come and help us good right Vancouver he, guy man that guy's awesome yeah bill but you know uh bill ward calls him the next john bonham right oh yeah he, in he vancouver, remembered in, Va ahead. in vancouver he's known as the atomic clock yeah yes, i've he heard is. that <laughs> yes, he is. i tell you what he's the nicest guy we met him two and a half years ago at a show in minneapolis and he remembered meeting my son and me Right. Wow. And and he felt like he had to say something positive about Mason Metal Fest. Good man. Nice. That's awesome. What you're doing, it you know, I'm I'm just getting chills listening to you speak. So forgive me for not responding for a long time. <clears throat> That's very cool, isn't it, brother? It's very cool. Our our family deserves this. It is. You know, I my 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 aunt has cerebral palsy, and um, so I grew up with it. My dad's sister. Yeah. And, um, you know, what you're doing is spectacular. It's, it's, I appreciate that. It, pardon my language, but it's fucking spectacular. Yes, it is. <laughs> this, 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 I like to say is for all the hardcore kids in the pit fighting, right? Yeah. Oh, I have Lamb of God, Sam. And this is for their families, you know, oh, yeah. because if, if we can bring awareness to their family and, and the metal family, you know, I'm both of those. I've been a special needs dad for 23 years. Yeah. It's all, it's all I really know. So, um, you know, it kind of happened by accident to me. I woke up world family, famous special needs activist and promoter, music promoter. I'm going to use it all for good. Oh, heck yeah. Love it. Absolutely. Yes, so Richard, I don't know. I don't know if you can answer this or not, or if it's too big of a question. But is there like one big moment when you went, "Holy crap! I can't just believe that this just happened," or "I can't February believe I ran into this person"? February seventh. What was that? that? That was the day Mason's article crashed Reddit dot com server. You know, wow. two hours later, I was doing that interview. Right, I woke up at about four a.m. on the on February eighth. To messages from people in Guatemala, uh, special needs people in Italy that are musicians that want to come play, right? Pretty cool. Uh, I have over 
I have dozens of musicians from around the world with, with special needs that want to come play for us. Now, I, I, I realize that, you know, not everybody's metal family. You know, we, we all have different music flavors, right? Sure. So Mason, yeah. Mason Metal Fest will always be in March for National Cerebral Palsy Awareness. Um, so, we're, so we're doing um, Mason Metal Fest for Cerebral Palsy Awareness. I'm also going to be doing a second show. And the second show is going to be called the Special Art Metal Music Olympics because it's time we start supporting our communities, our art and music communities, right? Get everybody involved, not just cerebral policy, right? But yeah. every special yeah. is out there. And not just metal, but every music out there because awesome. our communities are sadly being ignored, right? And these are great musicians, very talented musicians out there. I've seen it in our scene, right? These people need positive support, not ignored. How are we ever going to make this country better unless we start, you know, giving to our musicians, right? Because so many of our children are musicians. My daughter is a musician. She plays drums, you know? So I understand as a parent, how important this is to the youth, right? Our youth is really. Um, if I didn't, if I didn't have music growing up, I don't, I wouldn't be here. Exactly. Our, yeah. our our children are killing each other, and they're killing themselves because they don't have no leadership, right? The things that they like are being ignored instead of, you know, positively uh, inspired, right? So those are the reasons we're doing this. Amazing. Yeah, it is amazing. It is amazing. It happened to me. It's my dream, right? Um, I've always known it's gonna be sound weird, but I've always known this was gonna happen, right? Um, I talk about Mason's World Domination Tour for years now, and it's happening now. Um, I knew it would never take off because our news com coverage wasn't gonna help us, right? Right. That's why we're doing this global party. This nice. global party will make everybody pay attention to both families. Nice. So my hat's off to you because I know um, this can't be an easy thing and the logistics and the, the the toll it must take on you to actually do this, however many dates you're doing now, but you've been on the road. That's got to be rough on you as well, right? No, I don't. It's not so bad. I, I, I love it. I love it, man. I love it. I love people, you know. Um, I was told Mason needed a, a, a job or career, right? Because he's done, was done with his transition to school. And I thought about it. I said, you know what? Mason loves music and he loves people. He needs to be a music correspondent. So that's there where the go. best seat in the house started, right? Yeah. And I'm one of those dads that positively supports his children and what they do, right? Um, you know, I, I get a little bit choked up about it when I talk about my son. You know, because two years ago they told me he wasn't going to live. And here he is, uniting our world, right, with love. Yep. And with something we do not talk about these days, right? Our family does. Our family does, but nobody else does. So I thought, you know what? If I could get our family together and get them to help me out, we can make a statement to the world that we're, not, we're here. The youth of tomorrow will be metalheads again, right? Because that is, you know, in the 90s, we heard, oh, metal is dying, right? Sure. Well, they did everything they possibly could not to support us because they didn't want us to go on, right? They did not want us to go on. But we made it, we found a way to survive, right? And now we're going to find a way to unite. Yeah, a good friend of mine calls it the United Nations of Heavy Metal. Yes, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. I like that because yeah. it is all over the world. There's a news, news journalist in Russia that write about my son, right? Amazing. That, yes, yes. When I first talked to the first people in Russia, you know what they told me? United with respect, right? This is a, yes, because we're all the same. We're all the same. We're, we're all told that we're all different, but we're all the same, right? We look for the similarities and not the differences. That I think our world thing. needs a whole lot more of that, even outside of the what you're doing. That's just such a positive thing that it, it everybody really could take something from. I'm really hoping it grows from there. I'm really hoping it grows from there. Because yeah. I, I 
they're, 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 you know, half of my friends are metal, right? Half of them are not, right? Sure. But, but they support what is going on because it's special needs. It's a good father thing to be doing. Um, just so many different aspects to the story that make it grow. And I try to ship everything I can to Mason. I was asked to join a real big uh, metal club. And I, to be honest, I'm having a hard time doing it. I want Mason to be their member, right? Yeah. Mason, this is about Mason, not me. You know, this is about special needs in our family, not me. So when you ask, is it hard on me? No, I love it. I love it. It's amazing, my friend. It's just, uh, I'm inspired. You're inspiring me right now. Just to be, a, just to be a better you're person, <laughs> you know. You're, you're inspiring me, brother, because you're out. You're talking to people. You're trying to make this girl right. My job is to support you guys, right? It's the other reason I don't want to join a metal club is because I want to support all metal clubs, right? But I want them all to grow. I want our family to grow. I want our special needs to feel like they can go to a metal show and feel like they're one of us, right? Way my son was eighty nine bands brought shirts and cds for him Amazing. they made my they made my family feel at home that's great right. so chris uh i don't have anything i just i just enjoyed listening to that story i mean it really you know i don't i don't have anything to add to that i have no no it's so a very cool story and i think the world needs to hear it i think the world needs to hear it i've been told from day one that this is a good story, and a good story needs to be heard by the world right now, the entire world. Well, we're going to do our best to get it out there. And Richard, anybody listening hasn't heard of you guys and wants to get a hold of you and reach out or find out more about Best Seat in the House, how can they do that? You know, we're on, we're on Facebook, The Best Seat in the House. Uh, we're on Instagram, Best Seat MN. Um, there's also a... Uh, uh, I, I switched my profile page, my profile into a page. The Richard McDean page is the second best place on Facebook. That's all I've got, Chris. Anything? I don't. I just want to say thank you for what you're doing, and 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 really, like from the bottom of my heart, thank you for sharing this story with us. You, my friend Richard, uh, you inspire the hell out of us. Thank you. You guys have an awesome day. I appreciate you being uh, having me on. Thanks, hey, Richard. Thanks for taking the time. Anytime. Tell, tell Mason we said hello. I will. I, I, I will when he wakes up. The little metal or is crashed now. Yeah, no worries. <laughs> <laughs> I'll send you a link when we're done. You guys have a great day. All right, you, you too. Take care. Cheers. Thank Bye. you so much. Well, that, how's that for a story? <laughs> <laughs> we cover everything here on the uh, on the podcast. Yeah. I'm just wondering, you know, like, he's saying he's having a hard time getting coverage and i just wonder how if anyone listening right now could help get that coverage yeah i don't know i mean i don't know what reach we have me neither but you know the three people maybe it's five now but maybe one of the five is a journalist <laughs> i don't know if dale or christina are regulars or <laughs> <laughs> yeah i know that would be nice if somebody could uh reach out and help them Again, it's called Best Seat in the House, and it's Richard McDee. That's M C D E I D. You can find him on Facebook or wherever else. That was that was pretty great, I think. Oh, that was amazing! Yeah, yeah. No, it was the, when he was started telling the story. I was like, "What's happening with my arm hair?" <laughs> and I was like, "Oh shit, do I have pimples on my arm?" Oh no, those are goosebumps. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Again with the white head. Yeah, I couldn't help it. You know, it's just, right. It's like well, a cool, Seinfeld man. joke. You got to keep bringing it back and back and back. And oh, yeah. Back. We haven't mentioned the normal stuff on this one, so I'm, I'm trying to stay away from it. I'm staying away from it. <laughs> Thanks for listening. Please reach out. Uh, give Richard a buzz. Drop him a line. Best seat in the house. Who out there? Yes, we're out there, everyone. I'm Hal Schwartz. And I'm Flynn McClain. Together, we host None But the Brave, a podcast dedicated to the music and career of Bruce Springsteen. Bruce and E Street Band are on tour right now for the first time in six years, and we're taking a detailed look at what's happening on stage in our bi-weekly episodes. We've also been recently joined by some very exciting guests, including rock journalist Warren Zanes and Stephen Hyden, Backstreet's Magazine founder Charles Cross, and Barstool's Kirk Menahan. 
If you're a diehard Springsteen fan, this is the show for you. So please subscribe to Nimbut the Brave on your favorite podcasting platform, and we hope to see you further on up the road. Thank you so much! We'll be seeing you!